I am so sick of this city. I go into a coffee shop, and as soon as everybody sees that I'm a cop, they stop talking and they avoid eye contact with me. One lady even walked out. I am just so tired of being treated like the enemy. Hey, Hitchcock, your penis is hanging out. Oh, well, that's a relief. Papa, Papa, come in here. Hey, Papa's here. Papa, I'm so scared. There's a monster in my closet. Oh, buddy, shh. It's OK, I'm here. Monsters aren't real, my little pierogi. But I saw it. It was big and hairy. Oh, you just had a nightmare, buddy. No, it was real. I'm sure it felt that way. But I am going to open this closet, and I'm going to show you that there's nothing in there. Don't do that, Papa. See? Nothing. <laughs> ah! 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 <sighs> 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 oh, hey, Chuck. It's Pimento. Oh. Hello. Guys, 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 check it out. Hitchcock fell asleep in the break room, so I put his hand in a bowl of warm water. Come on, man, that's the stupidest prank ever. Uh, no, it's the smartest because it involves biology. I bet it worked already. Let's go check. Hitchcock, no! He's drowning, he's drowning! Fable, man! <laughs> I'll take it back, Jake. Great prank. Guys, I have a great idea for a prank. Before Holt comes in, I'm gonna put ink on the podium where he puts his hands. I don't think he'll fall for that. I did. How? I haven't even opened this yet. I guess it's unrelated. Captain Holt hates pranks. This is gonna backfire, man. Ugh, fine, I'll tone it down. I'll move his podium a foot to the left. What? He'll be so angry. Okay, five inches. Five. Three. Three. One. One? All right, I'll move it a half inch. Fine, it's your funeral. Oh my God. Worst prank ever, so stupid Holt's not even gonna notice. Good morning. You guys, the, the podium, it's... <laughs> You're crazy! How did you pull this off? Careful. I only get one shot at this Carlton. Don't worry. I know what I'm doing. I saw the first 15 minutes of the Hurt Locker. Hurry. The stench is too much. We gotta get those shoes out of here. How much time do we have? Scully ate his pot pie 30 minutes ago, so we probably got 10 minutes left on this nap. 12 if he's turkey tired. All right, come get up. Ah, it's trapped. Abort mission. I have an idea. Let's send these shoes to hell. Oh, wait. Yeah, it just smells worse than before. Oh. Uh, abort! I didn't wash my hands, and I don't care. Yep. Cool to be someplace where they don't cut you off right when things get good, right? Another pitcher of your strongest beer, please, good sir. And a uh, glass thingy to drink it out of. And, uh... One of whatever this guy's having for that guy, and one of what that guy's having for this guy. And another round for everyone, on me! Yeah. That's right. Thanks, buddy. What's the occasion? I'm celebrating. My name's Jake Peralta, and I just got fired from the NYPD. Jake, you gotta see this. There's something going on here. Something a little hairy. Nope. Don't see anything out of the ordinary. Really? Oh, maybe I should frame the question differently. Terry, do you notice anything? <laughs> Amy. New shirt? Oh, come on, guys. I grew goatee, and it looks amazing, and I know you can see it. Of course we can see it, Charles. It's horrible. It looks like you unclogged a shower drain with your mouth. Yeah, you look exactly like the guy in the Don't Talk to Strangers poster. <sighs> no, I don't. Are you talking about your new goatee? Mm -hmm. I think it's a good choice of your face. <sighs> Come over here so I can take a better look. Thank you, Captain. I knew you'd appreciate Bianca. That's right, I call her Bianca because she's dark and thick like my first cousin, Bianca. Jeffers, Peralta, now. Mm -hmm. Whoa! Oh, no. Say goodbye to Bianca Boyle. Bianca! <laughs> Heads up, there's our perp looking all perpy, just perping his way down Perp Street. Take a picture. Give him one second. This light is really unflattering for his complexion. It doesn't have to be perfect. Tom Olson is a bad dude. He's held up four electronic stores at gunpoint. Man, I wish you hadn't read that Annie Leibovitz book. Quit calling it a book. It was a visual journey. You probably think I should shoot this in color instead of black and white. Yes, shoot color. Why have you been shooting black and white? Where's he going now? Come on. Damn it. 
NYPD, freeze! He's trapped. Top of car foot chase. My birthday wish finally came true. Keep it up, Jake. He's yours, he's yours, he's yours. I know. I feel like the coolest person in New York City. Happy Turkey Day. Yes, right out of the gate. What? What's going on? We're playing Boil Bingo, Thanksgiving edition. Everyone filled out their cards with possible Charles-related scenarios. First to bingo gets 100 bucks. I had Boyle calls at Turkey Day in the center square. Boyle explains that they ate lobsters at the first Thanksgiving. They did. Back in that time, they called lobsters ocean bugs. And I'll just mark it off for you. I think I got the winning card here. Boyle tells us that he played Pocahontas in his third grade play. All the girls were too big. This is a fun one. Boyle says gobble, gobble, gobble. Well, now that I know you want me to say that, I'll just say it with two gobbles. Gobble, gobble. Gobble. God, it just, it just sounds right that way. Oh, I don't like this game. Ha! Boyle objects to Boyle bingo. Come on, guys. Boyle says, come on, guys. That's two for Terry. Well, guess what? I can spoil your little game by sitting over here quietly all day and doing nothing. Oh! Ah! Anybody have Boyle falls on the floor? No one? That's a victory. That's a victory for Boyle. Boom. Boyle says boom! Charles, this is exciting. Medal of Valor. I know. For getting shot in the butt. Oh, my God! For exceptional acts of heroism or voluntary risk of personal safety. But, you know, six and one. This is one of the NYPD's highest honors. Today is your day, Detective Boyle. Heroism can't be measured by a piece of metal. But what else can we do to recognize the brave officers that have put their lives on the line? It is my great honor to present the Medal of Valor to Detective Charles Boyle <laughs> and Sergeant Peanut Butter. Oh my god. Charles is getting the same medal as a horse. At least Boyle was announced first. Because the horse outranks him. This is amazing. That's enough, Peralta. This is a huge honor, and nothing can take that away from him. The horse is pooping on the stage. Sergeant Peanut Butter is pooping on the stage. Oh. Hey, Jakey. The place on the corner is serving lemonade, and you get to keep the jar. It's pretty cool. Yes. That's very cool, Scully. Mm -hmm. Will you excuse me just one moment? Oh, sure. Guys, guys, guys. Scully has a mason jar full of lemonade. You called us in here to tell us that? No, I called you in here to change your lives. For you see, a mere five minutes ago, Hitchcock introduced me to his new goldfish who lives in. <gasps> An identical mason jar? Oh, this isn't going to end well. There are two possible outcomes, and we're going to bet on which one happens first. So, will Hitchcock put fish food in Scully's lemonade, or will Scully drink Hitchcock's goldfish? Now, you would think that putting fish food into lemonade Hitchcock would be... Hitchcock just drank his own fish. What? No! Santiago, your test result from the sergeant's exam has arrived. Ooh, everybody make room. Amy needs adequate space to do her signature dork dance. I don't know if there's going to be a dork dance. Oh, look how small that envelope is. That's not a big good news envelope. That's a little bad news envelope. What? That's nuts. Sarge, tell her envelope size doesn't matter. If I'm being honest, I got a much bigger envelope. Oh, God. Unhelpful, Terry. Very unhelpful. Mine was bigger, too. OK, I just won't ever open it. That way, I'll never get rejected. Fine. I'll open it. No! No! Do it harder. I open it. You passed. Oh, oh my god. I need to be a sergeant. You're gonna be a sergeant! Yes! yes! Oh no, it's happening! Woo! Yeah. That's my future wife! So it's happening again. Rosa! Rosa! Hitchcock fell asleep in the break room. I pranked him. I tied his shoelaces together. You're 38 years old, dude. I know, and yet my pranks still stay so fresh. It's incredible. You gotta untie his shoes before he gets hurt. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously. Ugh, fine. But what's the worst thing that could happen? <gasps> He's being strangled oh. to death! How? The muggings were confined to Cabot Street. They began over two months ago. Just like this briefing did. Please go to charisma class. I'm here, I'm here. Sorry, Charles. No, Jake. Never apologize for making an amazing entrance. My power went out last night and my alarm didn't go off. Your alarm is power dependent? You brought this on yourself, son. Point is, it will not happen again. Carry on. Sorry I'm late, Sarge. No hot water this morning. But I'm here, ready to go. We'll cause no further distractions. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Seriously? 
What is your excuse today? More bad luck. My car ran out of gas, and then my clothes disappeared from the laundromat. I had to beg one of my neighbors to loan me some of his. You never told us Sinbad lives in your building. If Sinbad lived in my building, I would have a tattoo on my forehead that says Sinbad lives in my building. I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And I'm a half an hour early. That's right. My string of bad luck has finally come to an end. Peralta, you failed your drug test. There were traces of cocaine and methamphetamines found in your urine. What? Whoa, what's with the cast? I sprained my wrist. Oh no, what happened? Don't worry about it, I'm fine. Yeah, geez, Amy, back off. Leave the guy alone. All right, huddle up, everybody. Bring it in, bring it in. So he wouldn't say what happened, which can only mean one thing. He's in a fight club. No, he did it doing something he's embarrassed by, like smiling. Only question is, how do you hurt your arm smiling? Could be a sports injury. I sprained my wrist in college playing field hockey. Men's field hockey? Yeah, it's much more violent than the women's game. We're not allowed to wear anything that protects our breasts. Attention, everyone. I can hear you speculating about the nature and origin of my injury from my office. I tripped over an uneven sidewalk. I did not think it was relevant to your jobs, the jobs which you should all be doing right now. Get to work. Do you want to know how I actually hurt my wrist? Yes. I was hula hooping. Kevin and I attend a class for fitness and for fun. Oh, my god. I've mastered all the moves. The pizza toss, the tornado, the scorpion, the oopsie doodle. Why are you telling me this? Because no one will ever believe you. No, no. You sick son of a bitch. Hey, Gina, you got that file I needed Captain Holt to sign? Mm -hmm. hmm. Gina hasn't taken her eyes off her phone in two hours. First person to make her look up wins the pot. I'm in. Bet which improves someone's manners, double score. Sorry, guys, I got this in the bag. I used to have to distract her from my phone all the time when we were smooshing booties. Ugh. Oh. Yeah. Hey, girl. Oh! Catch you later. Mid-morning dance party. She's dancing even better than normal. Oh my god, did you hear that George W. Bush died? Who that? Boom! Gina may never look at another real human being again. She's unbeatable. Uh, I don't know about that. Terrence Jeffords, are you kidding me? Changed my relationship status to it's complicated. Pony up, y'all. <laughs> It's my wife. Hey, baby. No, 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 no. It was a mistake. My thumb slipped in. I have to go home. Cluck, cluck, gobble, gobble. Guess who just came from the PS321 Thanksgiving Parade? Charles, you actually Who's might. Who's Charles? I'm Tommy Gobbler, and I'm stuffed with Thanksgiving happiness. A gobble, gobble. Seriously, Charles. I, I, I warned you, I'm Tommy Gobbler, you silly pilgrim. OK. Tommy Gobbler. There you go. These are the Davidsons. They want to know what happened to their missing grandmother? I have some deeply tragic news for you. Wait for it. Wait for it. 901. Amy Santiago is officially late for the first time ever. All right, let's do this. Who's got theories? Uh, alarm didn't go off. All three alarms, all with battery backup? Come on, who wants to take this seriously? Ooh. She was taken in her sleep. That's what I'm talking about. Super dark, Boyle, but way more plausible than the Sarge's idiotic alarm clock theory. I bet she tucked herself into bed too tight and got stuck. Maybe she fell into another dimension where she's interesting. It's 9 AM. Why is no one working? Amy Santiago is a few minutes late, and we're all trying to guess why. I'd like to play. I'd say she's in line at the bank. This is fun. It is fun, but you're all wrong. She clearly slipped through a subway grate and is having terrible sex with a mole man. There she is, Amy. Where have you been? We've been worried sick. Do you care to explain yourself? I'm just 70 seconds late. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Santiago, you will tell us, and you will tell us now. There was a problem at the bank. Hot damn! No! No, no, no! You can't take it from me! Bastard! Don't do this, Scully. You have to be strong for her right now. What's going on? 
unit's being replaced. Come on! What? No. That machine's been here forever. It's basically part of the force. Take Scully instead. Yes, please. Take me to the land of vending machines. Can we at least have five minutes to say a proper goodbye? Whatever. Let me just start by saying that this machine is the best restaurant in Brooklyn, and it always had a table for me. I knew just where to punch it to get free food. Now I have to go back to punching Hitchcock. Look, she still has the bags of baby carrots I requested they put in. They're black now, but they're there. Goodbye, beautiful machine. Thank you for your service. OK. Squad salute. You can take her away now. Well, I think we handled that with dignity. Free candy! So that's 20 cargo ships in the last three months. Whoever's behind this smuggling ring knows their way around the docks, so we're going undercover as longshoremen. I will be Von Tom Tucker, a gruff, spitting, punch you in the gut sailor man who's taking a little break on dry land, but just until my girlfriend, Cangela, gets out of lady jail. Did you just spit in my trash can? No, Vaughn did. There's some tobacco in there, too. Vaughn chews it, but it makes Jake super dizzy. And I'm Twink Tucker. You cannot choose your own name anymore. I got a job at the docks to support my drug habit, but I kept it because I love the seagulls. What, are you Irish now? No. Well, we better get going, Captain. Don't want to be late for our shift down to the docks. Good news. The leader of the cargo smuggling ring turned himself in at the 8-3. The mafia was closing in on him. Oh. Oh. That's great. It's good news. Yeah. Case closed. I guess we'll just return these outfits. Great. Take this back. You have 10 minutes. Coffee. Extra black, extra no sugar, and real warm. It gets cold on them ducks. I want to earn gray tea for me, Twink Tucker. Nah, you ruined it. Morning. Who were those for? Captain Holt's uncle passed away. They weren't close, but I wanted to do something. Interesting. Flowers are a bold choice, Santiago, but I can still beat you. Beat me at expressing condolences. Yep, it's on. Flowers are a gift, and Captain Holt hates gifts. I think a thoughtful email is the way to go here. Dear Captain, we were all so sorry for your loss. Group sentiment, very meaningful. Please let us know if there's anything we can do. Selfless act. Very respectful. Correct. I am the king of respectfulness, bitches. Hey, did you send that from your personal or work account? Personal. It's a personal matter involving a personal friend and his personal uncle. So you remembered to turn off your signature, right? I don't know. Hey, Captain, I just sent you an email. Dear uh, Captain, we were all so sorry for your loss. Please let us know if there's anything we can do. Sent from my stinky butt. I was hacked? Thank you for the email. It means a lot to me. You're very welcome. I was addressing your stinky butt. Help. Come here, come here, come here, come here. You gotta see this. I'm about to give Captain Holt his gift. Oh, did he lift his no gift policy? No, he didn't. But I figured out a way to buy him something and trick him into accepting it. You are bad. I know, right? Oh, wait, you're making fun of me. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't care. He would never open a gift, right? But what if his gift didn't look like a gift? He would open it? Exactly. I left it in a cardboard box on his desk. There's no card, just the words open now, which I wrote with my wrong hand so he wouldn't recognize my handwriting. Captain. Santiago, Peralta. Sir. So, just to recap, you left an unmarked package on a police captain's desk on a random Monday with a suspicious message written on it that looked like it was scrawled by a crazy person. Mm-hmm. Bomb! There's a bomb! Everyone out! Let's go! Let's go! This is not a drill! Let's go! Great gift, babe. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to answer an age-old question. Right. What's Amy's deal? Is she single? No. We're dating. Come on. The question is, who here does the best impression of Captain Raymond Holt? You will be judged on voice, body language, and overall lack of flair. Everyone will perform the same scenario. Captain Holt eating a marshmallow for the very first time. Let the Holt off begin. What is this glutinous monstrosity before me? The sugar in this is quite sweet. Ooh! <laughs> That's your Holt impression? I could hear him doing that. Looks like a sticky pillow. I don't care for it. Classical music. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? What are you doing? Captain, hey, nothing. Just eating some marshmallows. Care for one? Marshmallow. <laughs> I knew it! 
I can't believe they're waxing the floor and we're all stuck in here. I've never seen them do this before. They do it once a month. We've just never been on the night shift. I know, it's like we're being punished. We are, for going to Florida. Oh, I don't listen to so much stuff you all say. Well, frankly, I pity the lot of you. You look out there and see a problem. I look out there and see an opportunity. I'm gonna slide on that slippery floor all the way from Holt's office to the elevator. You're gonna do the FBP. That's right, Rosa. I'm doing the full bullpen. About? Did someone find my meatball sub? A, we would never have a meeting about that. B, you are holding it. Oh, <laughs> meeting adjourned. Meeting's not over, dummy. Terry said he has some news from the office of Commissioner Wunsch. Ugh, what does that human blister want now? Does she intend to demote me even further? Or perhaps she'll transfer me to the swamps of New Jersey so I can patrol the sinkhole where she was spawned. Or it's possible the announcement has nothing to do with you. Oh, good thing you brought her. You're right. Maybe Madeline wants to inform us all that she's a chooksin. A what? A chooksin. A Korean toilet ghost. Lives in an outhouse, wraps her hair around your throat, and chokes you to death while you move your bowels? You know what? I will give you $6,000 if the announcement is she's a chooksin. OK, everyone. I have some news. The Madeline Wunsch is a Korean toilet ghost? Boring. We already knew that. Madeline Wunsch is dead. Say what now? Lastly, on a personal note, as many of you know, Kevin and I have recently reconciled. Noise! Somebody's getting some. It's true, I am. Now, when we originally wed, we didn't know how long gay marriage would be legal, so we had a somewhat rushed ceremony. Do you, Kevin? Yes. And do you? Yes, yes, we do. We're married. Kevin has always regretted it, so we're having a vow renewal ceremony. This time, we're pulling out all the stops. It will be a truly extravagant affair. Oh, how extravagant are we talking? Champagne pyramid? Destination wedding? Celebrity officiant? We got the salad forks. Can you believe it? A second fork? Who do we think we are? <laughs> Oh, no. You're shocked at how garish it is. Now I don't even want to tell you the other surprise I have in store for Kevin. Wait, let me guess. You're getting bread plates? Don't be absurd. We're not crazy. No, the big surprise is I'm retiring from the NYPD. Wait, what? Why did you lead with the salad forks? Interesting. Very, very interesting. Guys. Captain Holt has no pants on. Um, what? He has no pants on is what? Here are the facts. At 11.55 AM, Captain Holt walked past us holding a hot bowl of soup. At 12.03 PM, I heard him yell. Ouch! Then, at 12.07, he called Gina into his office. She entered, holding nothing. One minute later, she left holding an opaque bag. Captain Holt's pants were in that bag. His knees are in the breeze. He's in his undies. That evidence is circumstantial. Oh, so you guys want visual confirmation? Not no. really. Done. Hey, Captain, I just need you to sign something at my desk real quick. Just leave it on the couch. Dismissed. OK. Sir, you're going to freak. Yo-Yo Ma is in the precinct, and he's giving out autographs. Yo-Yo Ma is on tour in Australia right now. How would you know that? I'm choking on a lozenge. I'm going to die. I got to take. No, 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 I swallowed it. I swallowed it. It's fine. Hey, hey. I made you another bowl of soup since you spilled yours earlier, but you're going to have to come over here to get it. All right, Barat, I'm sick of you wasting time. So, yes, I spilled some minestrone on my pants, and I'm sitting in my underwear. Happy? Yes. Ugh. Sir, I need you to sign off on. Look at us. Just three people with pants on having a normal conversation. Yep. No story here. Sir, I'd like to talk to you about the new task force you're on the hiring committee for. The Special Tactical Operations and Auxiliary Strategic Response Citywide Emergency Investigative Unit for Emergency Operations. You know, I had a hand in naming it. And it's great, although you might want to try shortening it, maybe using a cool acronym. So the S-T-O-A-S-R-C-E-I-U-E-O. 
Mm, you're right, that is cool. Sure. Anyways, I know some of the best cops in the city are gonna be on that task force, and I would appreciate it if you consider me for it. Here's my resume. And I thought it would be fun if I wrapped it. But then I realized that would be a terrible idea, so I just wrote it down normally. It'll probably rhyme a lot on accident. Try not to focus on that. Jake Peralta is age 39, but professionally, he's still in his prime. <laughs> if you ask me, he's New York's fine, ellipses est. Charles enters. Chucky B with the burner, raining hot fire! No, no, Charles, it's not a rap. Never was. Everyone's professional here. <laughs> not the lyrics we discussed either. Anyways, sir, I really think that I deserve this task force. My clearance rate puts me in the top 2% of all NYPD detectives. I am aware of your qualifications, Peralta, but I'm only allowed to recommend one name for the S-T-O-A-S-R-C-E-I-U-E-O. -E -E and you don't think the acronym's just a little clunky? I don't know. It's quite catchy. Look, I really feel like I've got what it takes. I'm experienced, I'm hardworking, and I'm unflappable in the face of... <laughs> Hello, I'm your new commanding officer, Captain Seth Dozerman. My motto is simple, efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. Could probably just say it once. Are you making fun of my stutter? Oh, uh... Tricked you, I don't have a stutter. Boom. I've already established my authority through my amazing sense of humor. Well done, sir. Welcome to the 9-9. I'm Sergeant Terry Jeffers. And I'm not interested. I have no use for people. I find people weird and confusing. I live my life by numbers. You see this watch? It tells me how many calories I burn at any time. Question, how many calories do you think I burned walking from there to there? You, female, closest to me. Oh, uh, three? Three? Ah! <laughs> Try 0 0.8, numbnuts. I made promises to my superiors that I most certainly cannot keep. That's why I need you idiots to work twice as hard. No, 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 strike that four times as hard. No, 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 strike that. I need you morons to work eight times harder than you've ever worked in your entire life. I'm having a heart attack. Yeah, I'm having a heart attack. Get back to work. Get a doctor! So, do you recognize any of these men? I was hiding in the bathroom stall, so I didn't see his face, but I heard him. He was singing along to the music at the bar. Do you remember what he was singing? I think it was that song, I Want It That Way. Backstreet Boys, I'm familiar. Okay. Number one, could you please sing the opening to I Want It That Way? Really? Okay. You are... My fire. Number two, keep it going. The one desire. Number three. Believe when I say. Number four. I want it that way. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a mistake. Number five. I never wanna hear you say. Woo! I want it that way. way. Oh, chills. Literal chills. It was number five. Number five killed my brother. Oh my god, I forgot about that part.